Challenge second best deck, baby. Let's go. Today's video, I'm going to showcase you guys a real life deck profile with real cards. Since I miss real cards, and so do you with LH Zodiac. Let's go. Yes, it might not be the best deck pendulum, but it's pretty damn close. Because it's the second best deck. I have legit won three locals in a row with this deck. I'm 15 and 0 in matches. 30 and 1 in games. I've only dropped one single game and it's all live on my streams. If you guys are ready for this video, smash the subscribe button because we are almost at 40,000 subscribers. One for each trap card in our deck. So hit the subscribe button as you start the video, boy. It's time, baby. It's too well it's time. Let's go. <laughs> Y'all can see it in real life soon if you just go on tripgaming.com and get your beautiful trip electron play math online on tripgaming.com. Okay, let's go. Let's get started, boys. First and foremost, the Zodiac Engine. I don't play a big Zodiac Engine because you don't want to brick on them. I play one Thoroughblade, one Whiptail, two Ram Ram. If I own two Thoroughblade, I would play two Thoroughblade over the Whiptail. I do think that the best ratio is two Thoroughblade, two Ram Ram. So this is what I would recommend. And then the one Barrage, obviously, the three Tanky. These eight cards ensure that you're only going to open one Zodiac maybe two but the two won't be two that aren't thorough blade so you're getting guaranteed to have five cards in your hand or four cards if you're going first that are not uh that are not zodiacs that are trap cards you could utilize and use uh, against your opponent so you don't want to ever open three zodiacs which is why we only play eight and by playing two thorough blade you ensure that you'll end up having 500 cards in your hand after that next the elich engine we play two golden lord this card sucks. I obviously you hate to draw this card. You don't want to draw this card. I tried one, but this far I'm too many people play cards that banish. So you're gonna need two Golden Lords. Three Chris L land. Obviously, you need three. Now, uh, for throughout the tournament, uh, I don't actually own three Scarlets, so I actually finished going, I went 18 and one <laughs> in four tournament matches, four tournaments with two Scarlets. Uh, I do think four Elixirs is the correct number and six Golden Lands. I do think that's the best number. Uh, I do think you should play one black or one white. I don't own a third Scarlet, otherwise I would change it. Uh, I've been testing the deck for a very long time and I've, I'm, the, I'm of the true belief that obviously you need three Scarlets, but which one would you choose out of the black and white? I firmly believe that black is the best one. So I do think you should play one black white getting three Scarlet. This deck has, very, the only bricks in this deck is Golden Lord, uh, but the only you can also brick when you draw too many Golden Lands and not enough ways to Golden Lord. So this ensures that it's not a break. This brings Golden Lord out in the field. And sometimes you, when you don't have Zodiacs, when you don't have Golden Lord, you, you can't really play properly. You know, you don't really have any plays. This ensures that you get the engine running and Golden Lord comes out. Whereas the White Destiny is only good if you're already doing good. Like if you're already, if your engine's up and running and your Zodiac engine's up and running, like you already win. So this is kind of like, it sounds crazy, but this is more so a little bit win more as opposed to this. This ensures that your engine is running. And if you play perfectly, you're just not losing. I know as crazy as that sounds. So I'd recommend triple Scarlet and one Black Awakening. I do think four and six is better. Against combo decks, you side out the Black Awakening. Then you'll side out the extra Wakero, which leads us to the Golden Lands, where you, I play three Conquistador and three Wakero. Uh, it's just great, this format. Wakero is probably better than Conquistador this format. I'm not even joking. There's so many cards in the graveyard, especially if it's Drytron, that you really need. So, but again, against uh, against any combo deck, you'll take out the one extra Black Awakening and one of the Golden Lands, depending on the matchup. Typically this, typically Conk, whatever, depending on the matchup. And then you'll play three and five. And that's it for the Elich cards. You play eight Zodiacs and 15 Elich cards. It's 23, leaving for 17, 17 cards of the main engine of the deck. And that is Traps. This is how you win. There are zero Hand Traps in this deck. Hand Traps are not good right now. Why would you want to exchange a one for one with Ash Blossom? is probably the best hand trap in Yu-Gi-Oh right now, right? Skullmeister, Ghost Spell, DD Crow, all these cards are the best hand traps in Yu-Gi-Oh. They're all one for ones. Like you're literally negging with these cards. What are you gonna do? Ash Blossom a card and go neg one? They, it doesn't, they don't actually do much for you. It's all one for ones or neg ones. All That's all hand traps do. So why would you wanna put yourself in such an, uh, like already neg yourself? Whereas all these traps are plus ones, plus twos, plus threes sometimes. 
So you gotta play Trap Trick with the searches, all the best traps in your deck. That's really the best engine starter in your deck, Trap Trick. It can get Scarlet, it can get Torrential, which we're gonna lead, lead to now. Torrential Tribute, and how do you destroy most of this meta? I know it sounds crazy, but if you're playing in a tournament where no one knows what you're playing, you play Triple Torrential, Triple Needlessing, Triple Trap Trick. No combo, I don't know, there's not many combo decks out there right now, but there's still, like, PK combo is still good, Dragon Link combo is still good, people just don't play it. They don't play it, but you want to have access to this. These also destroy Virtual World single-handedly. So now, this is also a big reason why I want to test. I know it's just locals, doesn't really matter. But I went 18-1 and one in 19 tournament matches with the single loss that I had. Just getting Feather Dustered three times in a match. He oh, Like, literally, I'm not joking, three times in a match. It's insane. Like, he, he had Feather Dustered game one. But to have that is the only way to lose is pretty insane. Like... 18 and 1. So that's why you play 9 of these to completely destroy so many decks. And obviously, if you don't need the Needle Ceilings, you can always just take it out if you don't need it. Uh, so this is what I personally would recommend uh, in this deck. And I can attest a lot of my Ws to Needle Ceiling and Torrential. Even against Zodiac, they have purpose of Needle Ceiling. Torrential sustain all the time. A Needle Ceiling is crazy. Please play it in your decks, in your Elish decks. It's so good. Next, Triple Ice Prison. This ensures that when you face Elish... Uh, you have six Ice Prison, that's why Trap Trick is literally just the best card in this deck. So you have six Ice Prison against them. And obviously when you face Eldritch, you, you side out these six. There's enough cards to side out in the side deck, which I'll get to in the future, or later in this video. And then we also have two Heavy Storm Duster. The reason why this Trap lineup is so crazy is that they're also such high impact. For the decks that Torrential and Needle Sitting do not hit, Storm Duster absolutely destroys. So now you have, like I said, you have another search of the deck, you have five storm dusters in your deck if you want to so that's why i said trap trick at the beginning remember i said it's one of the best cards in the deck if not the best card it could get any of these crazy auto win traps when you storm duster at the right time versus decks that torrential and needless do not hurt you destroy them and obliterate them it's also great to have a storm duster in your deck versus uh a virtual world this matchup is free versus virtual world, by the way i cannot even begin to explain but it's good to have something to pop their trap card and then lastly, Triple Solemn Strike, which you can use versus everything. This is actually the least impact trap card in the sense that it's only a one for one. But the value of the Solemn Strike being able to be used against everything. And when you combine this going second with all your other traps, the value of Solemn Strike is insanely high. Because when you go second against any deck and you strike in conjunction with one of your other traps, uh, Strike ends up clearing uh, more than just the one itself. It ensures your play resolves and it negates the opponent's card and destroys it. So you'll still need to play the strike, despite the fact that it being a one for one. All your other traps are like plus ones, plus twos, plus threes. So this just ensures that it actually resolves. That's it for the main deck. That's a clean 40. Uh, I'm gonna get to the side deck before we get to the extra deck, because it's very important. I always view a, a main deck as like 55 cards because your side deck is part of it so abruptly that people don't understand. Your only way you lose is Feather Duster. So you put in these six. Uh, in the, um, on my Patreon video I'm posting today about this deck, which I do recommend you guys check out, I discuss my siding patterns, and as well as siding patterns, I discuss cool combos with this deck. There's a reason why I went 18 and 1, 19 matches. It wasn't by accident. It's because the Zodiacs do more than just go into Trident. They link climb into Nightmares and then Access Code, and I explain very cool plays on how to do it that a lot of people don't understand about this deck, and the siding pattern as well. So go check it out down below. And yeah, this a uh, reason why you play this much hate is... Literally, the only way you lose is Father Duster or Anti Spell. Sorry, Father Duster or Lightning Storm or Red Reboot or something garbage like that. It's the only way you lose. And you want to make sure you have as many of these as possible. Typically, you don't go first because you always win game ones. So uh, so you're going to go second game two. And typically, there's going to be no game three because you killed them 2 0. Out of my 19 and 1 matches, I think I only dropped like four games uh, out of all the matches. For a, for a small point, I was 29 and 1 in games. I was 15 and 0. I just recently lost the first one. Anyways. Not that it matters, it's just local. I'm just more so giving you guys the idea that why you guys need to play these to stop the Feather Duster. Uh, I played triple anti-spell for a while, but uh, you literally never go first. You usually 2-0 your opponent. So there's no reason to fear the Feather Duster. Also, always side Solemn and Order going second. Uh, they will Every deck will be playing Feather Duster going first or going second. So you're going to want to... like I know it sounds crazy, but it's the only way you lose. I don't care if they're useless going second. The only way you lose is Feather Duster and stuff like that. So you just need it. Sometimes they'll even side and Lightning Storm and make you go first. And evenly and stuff like that. Anyways, that's it for that. I discussed what I take out in the Patreon video, so you can check that out. Next, you can check the main deck and see, oh, this deck dies to Drytron. What do you do with Drytron? Uh, Drytron, here's the way you build this meta. This meta, you lose to, you can't choose to destroy every deck. This is just how this meta is. This meta is so diverse 
that you cannot choose to destroy every deck in your deck. It's just impossible. So I built my main deck to absolutely fucking obliterate every single deck in the meta with the exception of Drytron. For Drytron, there's a very simple way to defeat them. If any one of these floodgates resolve, if any of these floodgates resolve and they don't negate it, you auto win. That is triple rivalry, triple goes in and a skill drain. If any of these seven floodgates resolve, you legitimately auto win and they have no out around it. I understand there's a goes in match here and I know that they have light side light machines and light fairies but the idea is uh when you go you goes in match or rivalry when they go into the rank one to go into zeus so then they have earth in the field and then you literally just wait until you have more than enough stuff to destroy them and they have no option to do nothing but lose so goes in is an all these floodgates are literally auto win against them you side out all your zodiac engine against drytron for the floodgates as well you put in every single trap in your deck you put in Triple Solomon and Imperial Order as well to stop their uh, ways. And what you do is you banish, once you have these in the field and your opponent can't do anything, you banish the Medionis Drytron instantly. Because every single uh, Drytron player plays only one Medionis. So the second you will carry the Medionis and you have a Gozen to stop them, and they've gone through two Bentens already, doesn't matter if you're going first or going second, you absolutely destroy them. And when you're going second, you'll think these cards don't resolve. But I don't know if you guys remember our trap cards. How is your how are, how is your opponent gonna have five negates? You have all these trap cards to ensure that they're gonna fo be forced to negate it, and then you just auto win with uh, this resolving. You can, uh, I don't even need to explain how easy it is with strike, but your opponent is gonna have to negate all the trap cards that destroy their board, and that's when you end up with flipping the actual goes in and rivalry and to obliterate them. So that's the game plan against Drytron. I explain more on my Patreon video if you guys want to check it out. So that's it for these, and now there's a specific ratio I have against siding out against every meta deck. Uh, that's only 13 cards in the side deck. I left with two evenly matched as well. You're playing Trap Trick and Trap Trick can search the evenly match. And that's so unbelievable against every deck that evenly match destroys. There are times where you could set like two cards that you know you're going to resolve. You could pretend you bricked. You could legitimately set like a Trap Trick and Solemn Strike depending on the deck. If you're scared of Cosmic or Twin Twister, that'll dish it, uh, change. But depends on the deck you set. You could set like a Scarlet or a Conk or something. These are also very good to set as well because you set it, they're going to uh, uh, activate it to protect an attack, they destroy it, you'll strike something, and then you'll evenly match them when they literally just fucking obliterate them. So that's why Trap Trick is so insane with evenly in the deck. So that's a side deck, I'm not going to get into the extra deck, and I'm telling you guys right now for a fact, this deck is absolutely bananas. Uh, this deck is insane, almost as insane as this playmat. Uh, which you should, uh, yeah, go check it out on uh, tripgaming.com. Ja, ja. All right, let's go with the extra deck now. Two Tiger Mortars, two Chakanines. Uh, Chakanine is the biggest MVP because, like I told you at the beginning, no one plays Gamma, no one plays uh, Nibiru. Uh, so you go Thoroughblade Effect always. If the Thoroughblade Effect resolves, then you know they don't have any card like that. I know Herald's a card, but I would rather them Herald the Thoroughblade. Dryden doesn't do anything against Drytron. If they herald the throw blade, that means that they're minus two cards in their hand. I'm fucking down, bro. I just, I plus one there. I'm down. I'm so down for that play. And then uh, you, you'll protect yourself with traps. Anyways, so you'll go check a nine on the throw blade, special out the ram ram, and then you'll climb up into Dryden. And then you're guaranteed to have two zodiacs in the field with your trap cards. And then you have Needle City Intervention to pop the ram ram. So even if you destroy your, your whole field, ram ram will special something else back. Uh, anyway, so two check a nine and two tiger. You sell. You only use them when you need to. Don't waste your, these four. Then you got the Dryant, which is obviously you use whenever you need. And then the Borbolt, the Link Climb. I don't own Hammer Kong, so I wasn't playing Hammer Kong, but you should also play Hammer Kong. Hammer Kong for the specific reason of XYZ climbing up to six material Zeus. So that's why it's very important to play Hammer Kong. This is the proxy. I didn't use it for the tournament. I'll get to the end what this was instead. But this is the Zodiac lineup that I used. And one more important thing to mention with Dryant is i'll mention this more in the patreon video but so many times going second dryden is not there to go into zeus zeus is seldomly used you don't go into zeus every time the best part of the zodiac engine is the fact that you could dry uh, your dryden will typically survive so you activate dryden to pop something that he has then you go into track to special some uh, a special back something else and then you go into uh link spider with one of your ten thousand ways into golden lands and then with your, the two Zodiacs that you have on the field, uh, you go into Nightmare Phoenix under this. And then you, because the Ram Ram survives, you also have a Ram Ram. Then after you destroy them, you go into... So that's a Zodiac engine. I'm going to get straight into this combo part. Uh, it's mainly used for this because Chak and I can summon monsters easily. And you're typically going to have a Ram Ram via the Thoroughblade Ram Ram uh, play that I talked about. 
Then you could Cerberus, you, you draw one Phoenix, Cerberus, get rid of something else. And then after that, you go into Ningirsu, which Ningirsu is way better than Unicorn in this deck because you have Spider and Cerberus, it could out Dragoon if you need to, whatever. You could get rid of a Tanky in your field, get rid of a random card. Then remember that Ram Ram that you had on the field, or I don't know, maybe a Golden Lord that you should have on the field. Then you go into Axis Code. And then you destroy them and you special back the Golden Lord, which is at 3,500. Access code, which is at 53, so it's 8,800. So you destroy everything on the field and OTK them. So how many times can Ellis Zoo OTK? Never. But in this build, it OTKs so easily. So this is the Link lineup that I play. I don't play Black Luster Soldier or Alsa with the sole reason of, of Link climbing with the Nightmares. I think it's unbelievably good. You get free draws via this. I don't play Unicorn because Ngirsu is the better one in this deck. It literally does the same thing and you're never going to draw for the unicorn you're never going to draw for the unicorn because of how it's uh, it's done you know it's like this so you you how are you going to draw uh if the nightmare unicorn is here how are you going to draw it's just you can't so uh this is the links that i play i'd play alsa if i if i eh, nah, i wouldn't even play alsa black cluster soldier i wouldn't play either yes i understand it's good sometimes to use but if you're facing a competent player it's not an auto like it's not an auto win as you might think uh, competent players could beat it very easily and they ex could expect it which helps you in your favor because they'll pop your cards uh one card that i was playing was a uh, post side deck uh this is the only flex spot that i'll show you guys but this flex spot should be hammer kong post side deck you know we're siding into rivalry and uh into uh rivalry and goes in against with goes in you could just go into play these with your two uh, uh golden lands and still continue cycling your golden land cards but you don't have anything for rivalry for ri rivalry hurts you as well if you don't have anything hence you, you play i play one vampire sucker in the extra deck uh also for the sole reason uh for the sole reason of playing around rivalry yourself to be able to continue drawing and searching searching with your golden land cards and its effect to make you draw a card if you use scarlet and special in your grave or if you use white destiny to special under you can still draw a card Unfortunately, Golden Lord doesn't work if you send a card in gold, special Golden Lord from the graveyard because it goes to your hand first, so you won't be able to get that effect. And in any deck, sometimes your opponent plays Ash Blossom or Ghost Spell, you can always get a free draw one with the effect. So it's good for both purposes and also to play around your own rivalry. Uh, yeah. And then one Gustav and one Pleiades. These are also important to help OTK even, even quicker and just put up more uh, cards in the field. And you're playing a Zeus because of the Zodiac engine, so it's great to have. Anyways, that's a deck profile, guys. I think this deck's absolutely insane. I think after Pendulum, this is the best deck. I love this deck. So if you guys enjoy it too, make sure to smash the subscribe button. Make sure to smash the like button. And if you guys like this style of video where I go in-depth on deck profiles, let me know in the comments down below. It's real life videos. Fuck Dueling Book. I'm going to go real life videos from now on. Well, if I own the cards. If I don't own the cards, then obviously we can't do it. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace! Yeah,